Hello Internet, welcome to another Learn Adobe Illustrator video here on the Awesome Wood Things channel. I also make videos of awesome things I make in my wood shop if you're into that. If you like this learning material, I have a Patreon page that's a great way to support me and keep all of the awesome learning stuff coming your direction because I really want to improve your graphics game when it comes to line art and all things Adobe. Today we will look at the stroke options for Illustrator and everything you should know about paths. There's a lot of techniques. Some aren't really worth it. I'll sort it all out. Here we go. Okay, let's learn all there is to know about strokes. First, get your pen tool out. It's P on the keyboard. And by default, you will have a black stroke color and a white fill color. You might not know you're coloring white until it covers something. I just happen to have a graphic underneath here, but that's the way it is. I recommend using 100% magenta. Magenta is the most fabulous color, but I really like it because the default line segment is blue and blue shows up nice on magenta. Then you swap out the color for whatever you want. You want to increase the stroke. You can do a couple things up here. You can move this up or down, or you can use stroke over here on the panel. Same, same thing. Now, here's a cool shortcut. Hold the shift key down, you'll jump by 10. When I found that out, I was like, oh, that's awesome. And as with all of Adobe's fields, if you highlight them and scroll up or down on your mouse, it will, in a fluid manner, decrease or increase depending on which direction you you move your little roller ball on your mouse. Now, if you wanted to change the color, you can call up your swatches here. Now, swatches are nice. They're kind of hard to use. If you hold the shift key down and click the down carrot here, it will reveal what you really want, which is the percentages. So I really like that. And you can use your sliders. If it needs to be RGB, it could be RGB. Any color space you want, grayscale, web safe RGB, um, whatever you like. And here's an odd one, invert. Inverts the color. Don't know why you would need that, but <laughs> it's there because obviously it's needed some time. And then here's something you don't get uh, in other trainings. Hold the shift key down and the sliders will move in unison, in percentage wise. Well, let me get this really so you can see it here. See how these are kind of all spaced out somewhat evenly? Hold the shift key down and they'll, in a percentage fashion, shrink and, and grow. That's huge <laughs> because sometimes you get that color just right. You wanna make it a little darker, a little lighter, and you don't wanna kind of recalculate, all right, well, if. Magenta was 100, and I backed that down to 90, and cyan was 87, and then what would it be? You gotta get, don't do the math. Let the computer do it, hold the shift key down. So that's how to do the, um, uh, some good color panel tricks. And I'll just make this none. The slash is filled with none. Okay, let's get into the stroke palette because there's a lot to learn in the stroke palette and some of the stuff you're not gonna use, but we'll go over it quickly. Um, as you know, the weight, pretty simple down here. Um, this is a somewhat new feature, a line stroke. It defaults over here on the left and that means your stroke stroke will grow from the center of the line out if it's on this default one. Or you can make things go from the path downward and then the opposite direction too. Really, you'll want to keep it on the default most of the time. This was really only an issue way back in the day when you had like a rectangle and you had to go right up to the boundary of where you were allowed to print. You had to take 
20, and then you had to move, move things, you know, negative 10 in one direction and kind of bump it. And you had to figure it out that way so you wouldn't crash into the bump. So now this, this could help you down here if that's what you want. But in practice, you're really not going to use that much. Um, the corners, this is huge. I love the rounded corners. They just look so nice, uh, but they're not always needed. There's also a miter corner which has been in the program for a long time. I hardly ever see it used. It doesn't look very good. I like to keep this corner one here. But now take a look at this. This is an interesting concept. Let me move in here. So I'll get out my direct selection tool. And as I move this in, you see this corner will jut out and it's jutting out more and it's jutting out more. Well, there's a limit to how far that will render. And that's this guy over here. So if you get this way too close, Illustrator's gonna be like, are you kidding me? It's not going to do it. And that's what it is. Now, if you crank this up, it will faithfully obey that. This is saying 20 times the width of your, um, your stroke, it, it'll push it out. And it'll, see, now it's more than 20 times. Back that down to 10 and you're, so just be careful of these, harsh angles if you're on this default corner setting because um, they might shoot out um, a little too much or or what's probably going to happen is Illustrator is going to cut it off for you because it's past that limit that 10 times limit which is the default so that's that's kind of cool all right let's talk about dashed lines um, you want a dashed line boom click dash there you go i'll move it off this graphic just so we can not have to deal with that gray underneath it um, the way the dash line works is if you have a value in the dash which you have to have a value in that first one it won't won't let you do it without that if the gap is empty it assumes the same gap as the dash but you can change it so you can go six for example so now i have a 12 point line and a six point gap. But again, that's the default. That's the same as that as far as Adobe Illustrator is concerned. Take my line weight down a little bit. Now here's what you can do. You can put the cap values. We haven't talked about the cap value. Cap values are the end of line segments. And it also takes this um, dashed into account too. So let's look at the ends, boom. So now we've got rounded, rounded um, caps. Typically you would learn this with just um, solid, solid lines. So, you know, here's the corner. I have the default corners and here's the caps. I have rounded caps. There's also this extended cap. So that pushes out. In a, in a squared off fashion on the end. You, you really don't need to protrude these these caps like that. Just, you know, the first two are, are typical. Um, but these, these caps, they also play down here. Now, way back when, uh, when Illustrator was old, in order to get a dot, you had to do this. You had to go, you had to have a value. So you went like 0.01, and then you had like a 12 gap. And that was how you made a dash line. And we thought we were so smart. <laughs> because, um, but now it's the uh, Illustrator is a little more forgiving. And if you want to do some complex, you know, types of lines, you can kind of get that going there. So you can do like a, a dash dot dash dot type of thing. Yeah, like that. Possible. Um, so you can experiment with that. You've got six of these fields to play with. And that is the dash line. Arrowheads. This is moderately useful. <laughs> um, you can put an arrowhead and a, well, a double arrowhead or a tail 
on your stuff and you can control the size here and these things will uh, change the size as you increase the width of your stroke so that that interacts with these shapes that you're putting on these arrow heads and the, and the tails um, so you can play around with that couple options here you can have these have the tips of them end right on the anchor point or you can pull them back so if you want to pull them back that's the way so now they kind of start where the anchor point is and protrude outward a um, long time ago this was the only option people thought that that would be useful as well and now illustrator it's important for Illustrator to know what direction your line is going in. So if you started here, click down, anchor point, second, click down here, it's going that way. Um, and that's how this start and end works. You can reverse that if you choose this guy right here, swap, start, and end. And then that um, flips, flips it. Again, you as the operator, you don't really care what direction your lines are going, how you've rendered them, but in some operations it shows up and that's, that's one of them. And then finally, we've got this weird thing down here, this profile. So you can vary the width of your stroke with this new feature. And, um, you know, it, it's still a line, so you can increase, hold the shift key down, jump by 10. Um, it still behaves with uh, the other line settings in the, in the stroke panel. Um, and if you wanted to kind of, sorry, folks, uh, I lost my camera feed for about 30 seconds. It will come back. Uh, there's, there's ways to pull this out. This guy here, this width tool. You can tweak it that way. Hold the Option key down on Mac or Alt on Windows, and then you can control just one side. Um, you know, I just, and that, that flips it. So that's what that, I clicked that earlier. It didn't look like it was doing anything because it was even on both sides. So that kind of also flips the direction. How often are you gonna use this profile thing? Probably never, quite frankly. Oh, and then finally, before we end, this is a somewhat new feature as well, especially for rectangles. So you have a rectangle here. Let me simplify this, this uh, pattern. This. Okay, so what I wanna call your attention to is this down here. Um, the default is the way it existed in Illustrator forever. And now you have the option of cleaning up the corners. Look at that. Perfect corners. That didn't used to exist. <laughs> um, in order to get that, you usually had to break this into four line segments and then make this line and that line you know, work out perfect and then have the vertical ones work and you had to slowly tweak it, you know, 22, 21, you know, on and on and on. Not anymore. You can just um, go like this and it will subtly adjust what you have here under the hood. But you know, that really doesn't matter anyway. So that's a huge saver right there. Like if you're doing a coupon and you want those perfect corners, that's the way to do it. So you can experiment with that as well. Be sure to click that subscribe button and click the bell icon to get notifications of future awesomeness. And that's the stroke panel. A lot going on there. Some of the stuff you hardly ever need. Now you should have a, a good grasp of how to treat the strokes and the path segments and the Bezier curves of, uh, of your work. Hope this was helpful. Support me on Patreon if that's your thing. Otherwise, more good learning material will be coming your way. Thanks, Internet.